Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and I've been spending the last month with the 2024 Kawasaki KLX 300 SM. For those of you who are not in the know, SM stands for Supermoto. This is essentially a dirt bike philosophy and a dirt bike frame, a dirt bike, if you will, with street tires, street brakes, and street suspension tuning. And I've always been curious about the Supermoto bikes. In fact, I've been curious about the KLX 300 in general because we've had Honda's version, their CRF 300L Rally, and I like these sort of bikes that get about as far away from a car experience as possible. I like lightweight, I like easy maintenance, and I like fun. And that is what the Supermoto promises. So if you're somebody who is not going to find yourself anywhere near a dirt trail at any point in your riding situations, you might want to consider something like a Supermoto. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what it's like to ride this thing around, some of the pros, some of the cons, and of course, some of you are going to be wondering, is this a good bike for beginners? And I've formulated an opinion on that. This bike's seeing some subtle updates for the 2024 model year, a little bit of a different headlight design, and some few subtle tweaks here and there. And I'm not, not going to bore you with them in detail, but what you need to know is you got 17 inch wheels front and back with some spokes and some decently grippy rubber. I've been doing my best to try to utilize the edges of that rubber. You can really lean this thing over. I have had a lot of fun with that. You can practice your counter steering and really tuck it down into a corner and lift it back up. It's a lot of fun in that way. Right here, you're looking at a 292 cc inline one <laughs> single cylinder bike. And it's, it's right there. Any sort of work you need to do on it is virtually just reach in and grab it. You can even see the throttle right there and a twisting. You can adjust things. It's a straightforward situation going on right there. That is for sure. However, we do have fuel injection with this 300 SM model, so no need to worry about a carburetor, any sort of elevation or anything like that. We've got some passenger foot pegs. I did not have the opportunity to put Alyssa on the back of this one, but Theoretically, a passenger could sit up there on the very dirt bike oriented type seat. We've got a bigger brake disc up here in the front than the dual sport version. Two piston brake caliper squeezing this thing to a stop. However, no optional ABS, and that is a bit of a con in my book. Even though this is a hooligan machine, I get that. We're going to talk about that more near the end of the video. But for me, if I'm going to be riding a bike on the street, I at least want some sort of ABS. And yeah, just give me a fuse or something so I could pull it off when I want to do goofy things like endos and stuff, but uh, ABS is something that I would want for a street motorcycle. You also don't have any sort of storage on this bike, so this is what Kawasaki gives you. I know this looks like something I added, but this is right from the factory. In fact, oh yeah, it looks like it's bolted on. This has your owner's manual, and it's pretty much large enough to put, I don't know, if you needed to put, um, I, I guess a wallet could probably fit in there, maybe a cell phone, but pretty much put that back closed and then got a little bit of waterproofing going. And because this bike has virtually no storage on it, I highly recommend you get some sort of riding backpack. This is what I use, this is the Helite H-Move, and I use it because it doubles as an airbag. So you can see right here, this is all airbag protection, and this one is the electronic version, so that turns it off and then back on. Now it's using GPS and accelerometers to sense if I were to have an accident it would inflate around my head and neck and vital organs, helping keep me alive. So they're a little expensive, but you can get yourself 10% off using the code DAILYMOTOR in the link below. Get yourself a Helite backpack. This thing actually holds a lot because it expands outward. And I think I've put a whole 16 inch laptop box, not even just a laptop, but an entire new laptop box in there, just barely fit. So a lot of things you can put in that backpack. And I also use built-in water bladder, especially when I'm blabbering around in these reviews. Now the bike is a little bit heavy and a little bit expensive for my taste. You're looking at about $7,000 before you factor in dealer fees and taxes for this motorcycle. And it's about, it's just over 300 pounds if I'm remembering correctly. You only get a two gallon fuel tank and very limited electronics. We're gonna talk about that all as well. So you do have some drawbacks to the KLX 300 SM, but it's really oriented just toward the pure riding experience. I gotta respect Kawasaki for that. Let's go have some fun. Six speed manual transmission. Very responsive. 
sure you can take your MSF course with this bike and pass it with flying colors. First off, let's talk about the suspension. You've got about nine inches of travel up front, about eight inches of travel in the back. And that, along with the lightweight, translates into a ride that is very nice all throughout the city, even in the worst of bumps. So if you live somewhere apocalypse-ridden, like the streets of Metro Detroit, then you can ride one of these around and really absorb the bumps nicely. Probably some of the best suspension you're going to get at this price of motorcycle. What that long travel suspension also allows for is great lean angles. You can really lay this bike down, like I was saying, come through corners really sharp. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the engine. This little 292cc single, it's got character, it's fun. Now, compared to something like the Honda single, it doesn't make quite as much power down low. You do have to ring it out a bit more. And that's not my preference. For a bike like this, some of these lighter weight motorcycles, I like having that low end grunt to really yank you out of corners. This one is more of a, a satisfaction once you get it up into the higher rev ranges. You feel the surge of power as it comes on. And some people are really going to appreciate that. Some people like wringing the neck. And I got to say, it, it is fun. I mean, it's hard to deny that. It's very responsive with the fuel injection. You can really bang rev matches. Right there, around 8,000 RPM, you just feel it come alive. And it's a great amount of power for real-world usability. It's not exciting levels of power to where you're just going to be able to power wheelie out and around and, and really be yanked back. And that's something we're going to talk about a little bit more too when, we, when we're talking about kind of a, uh, who is this bike for, if you will. But what I appreciate about the power level is that you get to use all of it. So there's me just coming away from a, a light right there. And I'm full throttle through first gear, second gear, third gear. And then I'm slowing down here. Downshift rev matching. Full throttle back to get through this light. I mean, just for day-to-day -day riding around town like this, I'm really feeling like I'm, I'm utilizing the entire bike underneath me. I'm not riding around on something that I gotta be so careful I don't care only realistically use a quarter of the throttle in real world situations. Now the gearing on the Supermoto is a little bit taller than the, the Dual Sport version, so that's going to make it feel a little bit slower, but it also helps us when we're out here on the highway. So we'll see if we can get up to highway speeds here in a moment, and I can kind of show you how this bike is, uh, I'm not going to go as far as to say happy to cruise at highway speeds, but it's certainly competent to do it, and you can keep up with traffic. That's the most important. I don't think you'd really want to be on the highway for more than 30, 45 minutes or so between seat comfort and vibration and wind, but you can certainly do it. We'll see how loud this ends up being. I might cut it out depending on how it sounds. There we are, 70 miles per hour. And because there's no windshield, it's nice clean air on us. The mirrors actually stay pretty usable at highway speeds. And then now we're getting into rush hour traffic here in Southern California. But that's another advantage you have with the 300 SM is that you can lane filter and it's a pretty small little bike, so it's pretty easy to get around through traffic, as we'll demonstrate here shortly. Now, for those of you unaware, this is entirely legal here in California. It 
So you still have the power to accelerate even here, getting up past 60, 70. Bike's happy to do it. It's a, it's a usable amount of power. I think the, the move from a 250 class up to the 300 class bike was good for this, for this one. Another example, leaning it way down. <laughs> you just have fun around town with the 300 SM. And that's what's been just so nice and refreshing with this bike for me is, like I said, I, when I ride motorcycles, I like to be as far from a car experience as possible. I want to be on something lightweight and clickable and fun and different and, and funky. That's what this bike is. Yeah, it's missing a lot of kind of real world sort of usability features like that guy in that 1000 uh, GT from Kawasaki or from Suzuki over there has. But I'll go get in my car if I want to have a lot of those features. On the bike, I just want to ride. Now that being said, we are missing some pretty valuable features on the 300 SM that would be helpful for newer riders. And so I mentioned ABS earlier, but also when we move into the gauge cluster here, we don't have any sort of gear indicator. So right now I'm in sixth gear because I know because I've hit the top of my shifting uh, kind of pattern there. But if I were down here in fifth and I were a newer rider and I were slowing down, I'm like, all right, uh, should I go up one more? Okay, yeah, all right, go up one more. I, it's one of those simple things that just being able to look down and see which gear you're in goes a long way, especially for newer riders. But then also you don't have any sort of fuel gauge on here. And that is even more frustrating to me because this is not a particularly large tank. It's only two gallons. And this motor is not quite as efficient as I expected. We've only been getting mid 60s in fuel economy, 60 miles per gallon. So that means you're having to put fuel in this about every 75 to 100 miles. And the only sort of indicator you have is a low fuel light that comes on. And I assume you got about a uh, half a gallon or so, so 30, 40 miles after that. Now, if you're a new rider, you, you don't want to be worrying about that sort of stuff. You don't want to be tracking your odometer or your trip meter to uh, see when the last time you filled up was and then go in and, and making sure you've, you grabbed gas for the third time that week if you're riding regularly. And I know they're trying to keep costs down, and I know the idea of this bike is not longer rides. It's more either uh, kind of track sort of riding or just uh, sort of around town hooligan riding. But some people are going to have this as a first bike or have it as their only bike, and it'd be nice to have those things. Now, all that being said, do I think this is a good bike for a beginner rider? Two different answers to that. First of all, no. For some of the reasons I just said, some of the features that you're missing out on. Also, the power aspect. This does not make much power, and I know that's kind of good for some newer riders, but if you're not necessarily looking to do the hooligan sort of supermoto lifestyle and you're just looking to have a fun motorcycle, admittedly you are missing out on a big part of the motorcycle lifestyle, and that is getting to go very, very fast. This is only about 27 horsepower from the crank, and it, it's it's not fast. I mean, you can get yourself bikes for this price that make a lot more power and go much more quickly and are really going to give you that acceleration buzz that you just simply don't get out of the single cylinder format. I mean, that's a lot of noise and sensation right there for me pretty much just getting up to 45 miles per hour, which is fun in some ways. But if you're a new rider, uh, you're, you're kind of selling yourself short when you could be on something like a 400 twin or even a 650 twin and really having some exciting acceleration there. Also, if you're new into riding, there's a decent chance you're going to want to be doing a lot of riding. You're going to want to take your motorcycle any chance you can get and you're going to be riding every weekend and it's just having a, having a great time putting a lot of miles on. And this isn't a great high mileage muncher sort of machine. It just isn't made for that. You don't have the wind protection. You don't have the seat comfort. You don't have the fuel tank. That's not what it's designed for. The other answer to is this a good bike for a new rider comes into if you want to be um, a very specific sort of rider. If you're looking less to have an overall motorcycle experience and more to have this specific uh, goofball sort of lightweight supermoto style experience, even if you're a new rider in that regard, then yes, this could, this could be a very good motorcycle for you, but you have to be 
a very uh, school of hard knocks sort of learner because you're going to have to go out and practice your braking. You can't just rely on ABS like you would be able to on a lot of other beginner bikes where if you get in some sort of emergency situation at high speeds, you can just grab a whole bunch of front and rear brake and then come to a stop as quickly as possible. No, you're going to have to learn how to threshold brake. You're going to have to practice that. You're going to have to know what it's like to be uh, leaning in a corner and apply too much throttle and start to lose some, some traction right there because this bike doesn't have any sort of traction control. You're going to have to be resetting your trip meter every time you leave the fuel station so that you don't run out in the middle of a long ride. But the reward for all of that is that you're going to become more intimately connected with your machine. So if you go out and you buy one of these as your first bike, you're going to bond with it. You're going to have a very uh, perhaps difficult early learning experience, but then more rewarding ownership experience as time goes on because You've learned, you've practiced, you've honed your skills with this bike. And you, maybe you've laid it down and maybe you've had to replace uh, some mirrors and some foot pegs and some plastics, which are very cheap and easy to do on this bike. And then you've customized it and you made it your own. Maybe you've added some protection, a cage or something, because uh, you, you don't want to go through that again. For that type of person and that type of rider, yeah, this is a great beginner bike. It's lightweight, it's fun, it's the essence of motorcycling. But I want each type of rider to recognize the merits of the other type of rider. Some people want to ride motorcycles, but they're not uh, the type of person who's going to be wanting to do valve adjustments on their own and go into parking lots like this and spend hours uh, learning how much they can lean and, uh, you know, how they can wheelie and how they can endo and lock up the rear tires and back it in. And they, that's not the type of riding they want to do. They want to experience a different side of motorcycling. And they shouldn't be condemned for that. It should just be recognized that that's a different uh, side of the sport that we participate in. For me personally, this isn't the type of bike I would buy. I thought I would. I, I was really interested at the beginning. I wanted to experience what having the Supermoto was like. And after analyzing the price and spending time with the bike and what it offers and what it doesn't it's not really a bike for me but i i love that it exists because it's part of what makes the sport of motorcycling so cool and unique is that for seven thousand dollars you can go down to a dealer and get something like this that provides this sort of experience there's no sort of car that provides an experience like this bike does now the last thing i should say a lot of people want to compare this to the drz 400 sm and i gotta be fully honest I've never ridden a DRZ400. I've certainly looked at them. I've certainly considered them as my own dual sport soda bike. But uh, Suzuki has not responded to me once since I accidentally dropped their Hayabusa 40th anniversary model. I can't 100% blame them for that. So I don't think I'll be getting onto a these DRZ400 SM anytime soon. But I think it would be the better choice over the, over this one. I really do because. Oh, it gets back to, again, the, the type of owner and the type of rider. I think the type of person who's really going to most thoroughly enjoy a supermoto is going to be totally okay with tweaking their carburetor, and they're going to prefer an older, uh, more tried-and-true chassis and something with a lot of mod support. So I think it's cool that um, Kawasaki offers this as a kind of a turnkey, fuel-injected sort of option, but... I think that DRZ with the, the extra power and the one less gear is going to be a better experience for most people in this class. <laughs> oh, but I, I will look upon my time on the KLX 300 SM fondly. It's a fun little bike. It really is. Let's hop off and take one last look at it. Fun little color scheme. Interesting styling with the headlight. But overall, something that makes motorcycling great. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the KLX, check the link below. We got a little fuel test and a no talking winding road drive. And of course our whole portfolio of motorcycle reviews. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, ride on.